Hey there, I'm Ryan, and today we are going to work on an acrylic landscape lesson. All of the tools and materials will be listed in the video description, and if you'd like help with the drawing process, I'll have the traceable up over on Patreon, along with the reference photo for color matching. With that said, let's jump into it. The first tool we're going to be working with is a one inch flat headed brush and we're going to use this because it has a nice sharp edge for when we do want to craft those very sharp lines but it also has a fairly wide surface area so we can pick up a lot of paint which is generally great for our base layers and backgrounds. Now as per usual before we actually grab any pigment we are going to dip the bottom third of our brush right here in some water. This is going to condense all of the bristles and it's going to ensure that the paint stays wet for a longer period of time. With that, I am taking off the excess as you can see here because we really don't want to thin the paint out too, too much. With this one, we're going to begin with something nice and easy by taking some of our burnt umber, a little bit of our titanium white, and we'll mix up a nice bright brown here for the sand, which you're going to have in the middle of the canvas. And I'm going to begin by simply cutting along this top edge with the sharp side of the brush. Then we'll do a little bit of a blend downwards. That said, we normally start in the background of our painting, that way we can layer everything on top of it. But the sand here in the foreground is actually quite interesting because we're going to be layering the water on top of it. So this is almost like a background, despite the fact that it's in the foreground. And I wanted to bring this up initially because we're kind of breaking one of those typical rules you hear about when you're painting. And it's important to recognize that sometimes you're going to want to break those rules to get the best results. But the idea here, again, is that we are painting a subject that is going to have other subjects painted on top of it. And so we're putting this down first before the water. With that noted, I am keeping my brush fairly damp, which is allowing me to spread the paint out quite far, and I'm continuously going over this section a couple of times, building it up with some nice thick paint, because acrylics are innately fairly thin, and the first time you apply them, generally, you're going to have a little bit of the canvas showing through, so we're going back over it a couple of times, building it up, and just creating a nice foundation. With that, we're now going to grab a little bit of our Mars Black, Work that into our burnt umber, our titanium white, and we'll continue to add more burnt umber to this, but we're not going to add more titanium white because when these two mix, we get more of a gray, and I want a bit of a darker, saturated brown, like what we have right here. This is actually perfect. I'm going to apply this to both edges of our sand, and I'm going to blend very softly into our previous application. So I'm not using much pressure with my brush here. Generally the less pressure you add, the less of a streak you see in your paint because you're not pushing paint to either side of the brush. Here I'll go back, add some more. Again, those layers are important. And I'm using a very soft stroke to get that nice and clean. We'll continue Doing that on the other side, we will need to uh, mix up some extra paint though, so we'll grab some Mars Black, some brown, a little bit of titanium white. We don't want it to be too saturated. This is desaturated because we did work the white in there initially. We want it to be consistent. But you can see that I'm still able to blend into it to a point because we did keep our brush fairly damp which is keeping the paint wet for a longer period of time. It's also worth noting that we're making the edges a bit darker for a couple of reasons, and I'll also make the bottom a little bit darker as well, as you can see, kind of dragging one side over the other. The first is that we have the reflection of our moon coming down right here, so to make this area a bit brighter. The second is that we want the middle to be a bit brighter because the eye innately goes to the brightest spot in any painting. And if we can create a slight vignette, make the edges a little bit darker, we ensure that the viewer's eye doesn't just naturally want to leave the edge of the painting. 
So here, I'm going to go back over that middle area again, build up those layers, do a nice blend into the sides. The gradient doesn't have to be dramatic, you just want it to be lightly noticeable, so that subconsciously, again, the viewer's eye isn't straying out of the canvas, and you do have a little bit of that light coming down into this area. Now we're going to grab some of that darker pigment, work that onto this edge, because as you can see, it is a little bit thin right now. And then once this is done, we'll just let the painting dry, and then we'll jump back into it with the water. So now that we have our sand applied and fully dry, we're going to move on to this next step of water right here. I'm going to continue working with the one inch flat headed brush, and we'll grab some cerulean blue from our palette. Move that right down here, and we'll start creating a darker base layer to build on top of. So I'm going to add quite a bit of Mars Black, probably about an equal amount to the Cerulean Blue to get us started. Then I'm going to add a hint of Titanium White. This will subdue the saturation in the shadows a little bit, which can always be nice. It makes the highlights pop even more so, and it makes the paint a little bit thicker as well. Then I am going to grab some extra Mars Black because we are painting a night scene, and I do want this to be relatively deeper blue, darker blue. So, with that, I'm now going to start creating the next section that I'm going to work on. And you can see a slight line here. That does indicate a wave, very small one. But it's a good spot to kind of break this body of water up with. And we want to continuously break up our subjects and our bodies of water so that it never feels too daunting. We're not taking on too much Everything feels manageable, and we know that we can approach it with confidence. So, with that, here yet again, grabbing more paint. One thing you notice that I'm not trying to do is grab paint and then really stretch it down, because whenever we do this, we really thin the pigment we're working with, and it just doesn't have a nice application. We want our applications to be quite thick, and that is what we are working towards here. So I'll move paint out from the initial application, and I'll go over areas more than once, but I'm not trying to take it from one area and bring it into another when I feel like there just isn't enough there. Here we'll grab a little bit more. And I have slightly too much water on my brush right now, so you can see that the paint we're applying is very thin. You can actually see the canvas through it, that is a downside to incorporating water, but when you've been doing this for a while, you get pretty good at gauging how much you want to incorporate, and we can very easily just mix up more paint, not incorporate more water on our brush, and just kind of fix our paint to water ratio by going over it yet again. If you find yourself in the unfortunate situation where the paint just isn't taking to the canvas because it's too wet, that is okay. Just let it dry fully, and then come right back to it. But I'm very happy with how this is turning out, and I'm now just going to go over this edge one more time, make it nice and sharp. There we go. Now, yet again, the next step is simply letting that dry, and we'll come back in, add some midtones, maybe some highlights. So now that that base layer has dried, we're going to take more of our cerulean blue, move that down to where our initial mixture was, and we're going to mix something up that's slightly brighter than what we just had. We don't want it to be significantly brighter, because we want to be able to build this up in steps, but something that will stand out on top of our last application. So here you can see I'm leaving a little bit of that initial mixture up to the top here so that I know essentially what my colors are going to look like on top of it, beside it, and here I think I have a really nice pigment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, this water is very close to the shore here, right? So we're not going to have a lot of big waves, we're going to have slight ripples in the water. And what I'm going to want to do is start by creating some nice 
linear strokes that kind of coast by the edge here, being very soft with my application. Sometimes if I don't even get any paint on the canvas, I'm okay with that. I just want it to be really soft. Really subtle. And then as I move out farther away, that's when we can start incorporating more of a wave shape. But I don't want to do that with this brush. So, once I kind of move up to this edge here, I'm going to put this down, just get the paint off of it, and I'm going to switch to a smaller round pointed brush. This one is about an eighth of an inch, and it's great because that sharp point can deliver some detail, but that soft edge can render some really nice you know, calming applications, great for gradients, mist, fog, really any of that. But we'll take some of this pigment here, and we'll start creating some more dramatic lines, as you can see. Things that move on more of an angle, rather than kind of a horizontal application. And we're kind of moving some of this into other areas. We don't want to overdo it. And this is also going to be a wave right here, which is facing us. The light is coming from the other way, so the top of the wave is going to be very bright. So we'll just add that in, so we know exactly what that is. There we are. Now we can continue adding some highlights. And for this, I'm going to switch back to this brush. I'm going to add a little bit of titanium white to that mixture we were just working with, brighten it up, just a hint. Now in the same way we initially applied, I'm going to work this back into the water. For the most part, I'm going to be looking for our previously applied blue applications and I'm going to apply it to the top of them. That way, we have a bit of a gradient where you have that brighter blue on the top, and then it moves down to that slightly brighter blue, and then we have that darker pigment all the way at the bottom. So we immediately have three very easy levels of depth. And here I'm even going over some of those more diagonal lines which are giving us a bit more of that wavy look. But again, I don't want too many, and what I have there is arguably maybe even a little bit more than I want. So in this scenario, you can go back and you can grab that darker pigment and just re-interject that. Don't ever worry about kind of messing up with acrylic paints. They're incredibly forgiving, and it's so easy to just go back and reapply other pigments. So. So far, so good. We're definitely going to brighten this up significantly more as we continue, but I'm very happy with it at this point. And we're now going to do a little bit of a shadow right under here now that we have this defined. For that, I'm going to make my smaller round pointed brush quite damp. I'm going to grab a little bit of Mars Black, a little bit of our Burnt Umber, again making it quite wet so that we have almost what is a glaze, and a glaze is just a very thin amount of paint that's going to change the value, but not really the hue. So we're changing how dark or light something is, but we're not changing the color. Here we'll grab some more Mars Black, some more of our brown, a little bit of our white, not too much though. Again, making it pretty watery. We want this to be relatively soft in the end. So I'm just working it along my edge. And then I'll go back and using the side of my brush, do a very soft little blend. I'm working the brush in a bit of a circular motion. But it's soft so you don't see that circular motion. And this again is just the shadow from this bit of water that we have here working its way onto the sand. And you can do this a couple times. Right now I have a lot of water on there and I don't want to throw any more there because if we were to do that, 
probably just be very difficult to add paint. So, I'm happy with that for now. We might go back and add more to it later, but it's looking quite good. With that, we're now going to take that same brush, yet again, make a slightly, slightly brighter variant of our blue. Just like that. I'm going to go into the middle, the areas that are peaking up the most, and we're going to throw this in. And we're applying it to the middle because again, the moon is going to be in the middle. It's going to be casting the light through here for the most part. And this is where it makes the most sense. Again, we're creating a nice vignette. You can see how this line and this line connect into a singular line. It's pretty nice. There we go. Again, subtle, but that's what we want right now. With that, we are going to move up in the canvas. So for this next step, we are going to move back to the one inch flat headed brush. We'll grab a quite a bit of our cerulean blue, Mars black in an equal amount, hint of titanium white, and our goal yet again is to remix the darker pigment that we used initially for the base layer. Now, I did leave some of that up there, and I do remember going back and adding some additional Mars Black into the mix, so we will do that now. And, you know what? I think this section, and I'll show you right here, this section is fairly manageable. So, this will be our next goal, and we'll just fill this in simply with this nice darker base color. I will blend a little bit of it down into the area on the left here. The water actually moves in kind of a continuous flow on the left hand side. Here it's broken up by the wave, so I do want to do that test on the left hand rather than the right hand, but it does look like we found that same color. And, you know, I knew we wouldn't be that far off because we were mixing right beside our previous mix, but it's nice to kind of just make sure we're doing everything right. And, you know, it's been a while since that dried. We talked about wanting to wait and let it dry. So a number of you are probably questioning, you know, how did you just blend this into this? We did what's called a wet into dry blend, and that's when you take a wet pigment and you move it on top of a dry pigment with a bit of water on the brush or a medium to thin the paint. That way the paint is semi-transparent. And then from there, you just let it dissipate as you move over that dry layer. So eventually, you don't have any paint on your brush and you just have a nice gradient of paint into no paint. And it goes on smoothly, doesn't create uh, too many strokes as long as you are you know, soft with your application and you ensure that your brush again is relatively damp. With that, you can see that we are doing this quite quickly, which is nice. I'm trying my best to avoid this area, at least initially, because I know I'm going to need a good amount of paint and I'm going to need to make a very sharp application. I don't really want to hinder the line work that we have here. So we're just going to be relatively careful. Mix up some extra paint. We have some black, some blue, and I might make this slightly darker because I want the top of this wave to stand out. It'll have some highlight on it, and if we can make the water right behind it a little bit darker, then it'll stand out to an even greater degree in the end. So, we're just going to build slightly more contrast, and you can tell that this really isn't much darker than what we've been previously working with, but it's just enough to make a subtle difference that will boost the contrast of the painting, and that wave particularly. So, with that, we are now yet again going to let that base layer dry, and then we'll hop into it with some details. So, now that our base layer is fully dry to the touch, we are going to move to the smaller, round pointed brush, and grab some of the highlight that we were previously working with through all of this. Now we have an opportunity to take some of those strands and start moving them backwards a little bit in the painting using Line work that does have a bit more of a movement to it. Here you can see I'm moving up and down. We are starting to incorporate that wave-like effect, but I'm not going to make it too, too frequent. 
and I'm not going to make any of them like hyper high movements either. I want it to be subtle, especially as we just start moving into the background here. Keeping my brush fairly damp so that we have, you know, just a nice sharp stroke initially. I like that. I like that a lot. We have a, a good movement there. And we are going to have to remix some paint. I didn't mix up too much initially just because, you know, as per usual, we like to have a little bit of practice first, make sure that we are moving in the direction we actually want to. But here we go again for round two. And that's looking a little bit darker, which I actually don't mind. That right there is really nice. Okay, so we're going to continue moving into the background, but I'm going to start using a different technique here. So we have this kind of transition area, and then moving into that transition, we have a couple of fairly similar motions. These are all moving almost horizontally, but they're on a slight angle, moving downwards. And the idea here is that we are creating a general motion for the water as it's getting a bit farther out and you know, getting to that point where we can start establishing some larger, almost like wave formations. So, we have those right there. I think they look quite nice. I'm going to create a little bit of a top for portions of this, just like that. Connect them all a little bit. Have it look like it's rolling in to a point. Grab some more of this pigment here. Just looking down, checking my reference photo, saying, okay, you know what, I really like that. I know that I want a larger wave on this side. Fairly similar to what we have here, but I want it to be more elongated. I want it to have another little rise right here as this one starts to taper off so that they're different. We can differentiate between them. And then we'll come back down into right about there. You can also see that the line gets smaller as you move this way. And then from there, we'll take some of that paint from the top and we'll move this down so that it's rolling in the same way that is right there. And as we get down towards this bottom area, we'll just start connecting it in the same way we did the regular little waves. So we're breaking that pattern and having a couple different things going on here so that it doesn't become monotonous and boring. We can also start to straighten out some of these applications as we get towards the bottom. So it kind of drops off and then it moves like that. I'm also not connecting all of them to that bottom area. This one, for instance, this one right here, also both kind of stopping at that halfway point, dissipating very softly. That is what we are looking for. There we go. Definitely starting to get some nice movements in here. It's feeling natural, nothing feels like there's too much movement, not too, too quickly, not too close to the shore. It's all very measured. And I think when I started painting water, one of the biggest hindrances that I found was that I was trying to make everything too extreme all the time. Going for something much more subtle, keeping your lines more horizontal even when you want movements is going to really aid the process. With that, as we start to move farther backwards here in the painting, as we get closer to that horizon, we're going to want to start making things a bit more choppy. So we are creating a series of these little triangular pieces, but we're keeping them relatively small as the farther away something is, the smaller it's going to look. And we're also going to get a lot more atmospheric reflective light, which is going to make things look a bit more visually samey. Where in the foreground, because you're close to it, you can articulate it well visually, and things generally have more of their innate natural coloring. Now we're not straying too different with our coloring here. In fact, we're not doing so at all right now, but 
we can make things look a bit more simple. And it's important to recognize that in different parts of your painting you're going to want things to stand out and in other parts you're going to want things to blend in. Because the eye can't focus on every part of the painting at once and you want to find that balance. You want to give it subjects to look at and focus on and you want to give it subjects to kind of relax visually in and say okay I don't have to decipher too much, this is pretty repetitive, I understand what's happening. It's kind of a, a break and a rest for the eyes. Here I'm getting more and more transparent. I'm just using more water on my brush, it's letting me get these cleaner, sharper lines. But it's also great because it kind of lets it dissipate. This area right here is really bright. When we have that reflection in there, it'll pick up a lot of attention, that's what we want. That said, now that we have a general progression here, I do want to move back into this area and add some extra detail throughout here because while the water is washing up on shore and you're going to see these various lines, it's not too wavy, you're also going to see a really nice little sparkle effect and we'll get, we'll get to that when we move a little bit closer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make up a bit of a lighter blue for more of that really nice reflective shine that we're going to build up more so in the middle of our water that will eventually reflect that of the moon's reflection. And we're going to start by making things look pretty segmented. We already have these nice long defining lines and now what we're going to do is make something that's a bit more detailed because we are in the foreground we can pick up on those details. And these are just the little areas of water that are rising because either that little part of the water is a bit more choppy or perhaps it's moving over a couple little rocks, areas of sand that are kind of protruding, just different things that are going to lift it slightly more than other portions of water and accentuate those portions. So, here you can see we're going in with a highlight which is much more prominent. I'm doing lots of little taps as we move along the edges. I'm using a very watery mixture and that should be notable by the fact that we're able to just continuously add so many of these little applications. It's not stopping. We have so many opportunities here even out on the edges we can just Put in really small ones and it'll look a little bit awkward for a minute but when we go back in and we add the actual reflection into the center it'll look so much more cohesive and very detailed. It's one of those applications where you kind of just need to trust the process which is uh, something you will get very used to with acrylic painting because a lot of it is layering based and when you need to do a lot of layering, you need to do a lot of trusting in yourself and in the medium. It's great for, you know, just kind of building that confidence in your abilities and what you intend to do. Here you can see that I started predominantly in the foreground. And you know, we can do a bit more of a touch up right here, just in that middle area. Because I know I want a lot of those reflections right here in the middle. So we might as well start building up those highlights now. But then I'm also starting to move it into the background there. It's really starting to come together. I like that a lot. There we go. Starting to book a bit more real. We'll grab more. And whenever I grab more paint, I generally like to incorporate it in an area that's already pretty established just because it can be quite a lot when you grab paint and you might not realize it. So you want to start in an area where you already have that application just in case you add a lot to the canvas. You don't want to add a lot to it up here, right? This is an area that you want to be dissipating, you want it to be very controlled, and when you 
grab that initial paint. While you might be able to render a very sharp line, you might not have the best accurate assumption of just how much paint is there and what effect it will have on the painting. So here we mix more. I'm going to make my brush more watery, get off that excess paint that we just mixed with. Try it in here first, and oh, that's nice. That's an even brighter highlight. So we're building. And I know what we're doing right now, it all probably feels pretty visually samey. We're doing the same technique over and over again, but you can see how we're layering. You can see how we're building. You can see how many times we're going back over things and just continuing to establish how this is all working out. There we go. I think we'll start connecting that a little bit. Give it a bit more of a defined line again, but I don't want to bring it down farther than the actual shadow. We did incorporate that for a reason, right? That said, starting to run out of paint, but I know my brush is still wet, so I can still deliver those nice sharp lines, and that means this is a great opportunity to move up in the canvas, predominantly in the middle, right? Because this is where that reflection is going to be. This is where we need that light to be built up from. I keep noting that this is where the light's going to be and you know, in the moon's reflection. I assume, because you've seen the thumbnail of the video, you know that we're going to put it in the middle of the sky, but just in case that wasn't something that you noticed in the thumbnail, that is where we're putting it and that is the reason why we are building up the center of this painting to the great degree that we are. There we go. Now you can probably tell that the more we add to the background here, the more the foreground starts to look a little more average, a little more normal, right? And that's natural. And that is why you want some areas to have more detail than others. You want some areas to be more saturated, to have more contrast. It's all about finding that balance and directing the eye to where you want it to be. So now that we have this area up here being so much more visually noticeable and dominant, then we say, okay, you know, we should go back here and we should add more highlight to that and don't let it extend all the way up there because then we'd fall into the same trap, right? So yet again, we are going back to our palette. We're mixing up the brightest blue that we've mixed thus far starting to turn into more of a white. The more white we add, by the way, the more we desaturate the pigment, but it's kind of a necessary game you play to brighten it. You can only get blues up to a, a certain brightness, right? And we're not going in with a pure white. We still want this to have a warm or a cool hue to it. Apologies if I'm getting a little bit quiet. I'm definitely focusing quite a lot right here. Want it to be in the middle, but I don't want it to be too much, but I want it to be enough to have this area recapture that attention. I'm going over previous little taps, all of those little blue markings that we instigated in the last application. Those are predominantly where I'm trying to add this highlight to because the highlight wouldn't make all that much sense if we added it to a darker area. This is the highlight on top of the highlight. This is the brightest area. This is the most pronounced spot. And if we were to put this over a darker area rather than a previously assigned blue highlight, we'd probably get something that looks a bit more gray and it would not give us that beautiful layering effect that we're working so hard to achieve that we put in all of those base layers for, right? There we go. Now I'm not going to go too high with this 
Again, we're being smart here. You can tell that I'm not going all the way over this line either. It's little taps, leaving openings. It's going to create some really nice complexity in the piece. I'm also not bringing this all the way over to the right. I'll just look for a couple of spots that I think, okay, you know what, that could use a highlight, that could use a highlight. Being very careful with this. You can tell just how much less we're applying up here than we were down there. And I think we are really finding that balance right now. Might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to take it off with my pinky finger. We love our finger painting here on this channel. As long as our hands are very clean and not oily. Because again, if your hands are a little bit oily, then it'll be really difficult to go over your paint with more paint or water. Because the oil on your hands will make that area difficult to work on top of. So just make sure that your hands are very clean. When you're doing that, and this is going to be a nice wave in the foreground that we haven't really established all that much yet, but I will go back and add that highlight to it right there because it definitely makes sense, being that it's so close to us. There we go. I'd also like to show you how I'm going to establish that wave a little bit better. So I'll take some Mars Black. I'll take some Cerulean Blue. Hint of Titanium White. Very, very, very small amount. <laughs> very small amount. And then we'll go over here. And with the dark pigment, we'll just layer that in. But you can see that I'm going with this nice little sweeping motion. I'll add a little bit under the top of the wave, give it a bit of a shadow, that way it looks like it's coming up, casting the shadow here, light's coming through the middle, but the bottom area is a bit darker. And now, I'm going to clean my brush off, come back in, and soften that a little bit with a wet brush. That said, now that it's super wet, I don't want to work too much on it right now because I don't want to just start ripping paint up. So I'm going to wait five minutes, let that dry completely, then we'll come back into it and add some additional detail, really bring it to fruition. We're also not fully done with this area yet, but I do want to take a little bit of a break from it, digest it, and just ensure that we're not overdoing an area or underdoing an area. By taking a step back, you can really look at it objectively and you know, come into it with fresh eyes. So that's definitely something I'd recommend, especially when you're coming towards the end of a subject. It's also worth noting that we don't really want to finish anything, at least this is the way I like to create, this is the way I like to paint, until the majority of it is almost done, then I finish everything at once together to ensure that it is all cohesive and that every piece works with every other piece, that they're all balanced in terms of hue, value, complexity, all of it. And that's definitely how I'd recommend working. With that said, we're going to take our little break, make sure that we're hydrated, make sure that, you know, if we need to uh, have lunch, that we do that. It's so easy to forget to eat or grab a drink when you really get into painting. So just make sure that you're, uh, you know, staying healthy and staying hydrated. With that, I will see you in a second. So now that we've darkened this area and softened some of those shadows, it's time to reincorporate some light and detail. We're going to try to do this from a little bit of a distance here. You can see that I have my titanium white, my cerulean blue. We'll grab a hint of our Mars black as well. And while this isn't actually a bright color, it will look fairly bright in contrast with what we built up right there. Now, this next step is going to kind of being reincorporating smaller waves within this larger one. So, of course, water is going to be moving up like that and then going down through there, and we just want to capture those little movements predominantly at the bottom because they are protruding enough that this won't cast a shadow on them. This is going to cast a slight shadow on part 
of that bottom area, but once it gets far enough out, then we'll be able to see those nice highlights again. And that's exactly what we're working on. You can see that this, this, and this all have different heights. So we're trying to keep that diversity instilled. We're trying to keep them from you know, different distances in general as well. Oh, that's nice. Lots of little taps through here. And we can even build up a little bit of highlight at the top, should we want to. We can make a little bit of it falling, should we want to. Just a tap for the falling water. Done a lot of tapping effects through this painting already. But, just like that, I think it looks quite nice. With that, we are now going to move on to the next step, and that is going to be the wave that we have kind of at the top right here. Again, we do want to go back and add some additional highlights to this, but we want to do it a little bit later when we can ensure that we're balancing everything really well. Now, for this next section, we are going to be going back to the one inch flat headed brush because again, it can carry quite a bit of paint and we are going to work on our horizon line, which as you can see, is a sharp line, much like the head of this brush. So, with that, we want this area, this wave right here in the distance, to be a little bit darker in the same way we made the heart of this one, and then this backing area is going to be a bit brighter, more so akin to what we have right here. So, with that, we'll grab some of our cerulean blue, move that down on our palette, have a good amount. We'll grab some of our Mars black, not too much, because again, it's just so prominent. Mix that up, make sure that we don't have any spots in here with the blue or spots in here with black. We do want that good mix, that way when we're picking it up with our brush, we actually get something nice and consistent. With that, I'll also grab some titanium white. This, of course, will thicken it up and desaturate it a little bit, which is nice in the shadows because it means that when we go ahead and we brighten the blues for the highlights, we don't end up having some of it looking very saturated and some of it looking very desaturated. It keeps it at a good balance. With that, I'm currently looking at mixing towards what we have there, as that is our previously implemented darker pigment. I think it's a little bit more gray, but it's also important to recognize that wet paint is innately going to look darker. And I think this is a nice pigment for the back here. Let's give it a try in some of these previously applied areas. I am quite confident with it now. So here we also have the, uh, the question of while painting this, do we want to do so on top of all of our drawings or do we want to kind of work around them like I am here roughly? And the answer is going to change depending upon how you personally like to paint. If you don't want to have to redraw it, then yes, you can work around it, but make sure you are slightly covering the edges. That way you don't have awkward little spots of canvas showing through when you go ahead and paint this, because if there is a little bit of canvas left, not covered by the blue or by that railing, you're going to have to cover it up with that railing and then it'll look a bit distorted. So we're just going ahead and making sure that all of those spots right here are well applied with this darker pigment. But if you wanted to be extra sure, you could just cover the entirety of this water and then go back in and redraw all of those beams. It's really up to you and how you prefer to work. Neither option is right or wrong. More so preference. That said, just to ensure that I do have a nice straight horizon line, I am going to put a line through all of them, especially back here where it gets difficult to maneuver around them. And then I can kind of go in and just kind of fill in those spots. And with the back here, I think because they are so small, I am just going to fill it in, where with the ones in the foreground, I'll keep them. So I'm actually opting 
in the end here for a bit of a combination, which again, hopefully illustrates the fact that both techniques are entirely valid. And there we go. Just covering it up like that, very cathartic. You know the application's working, it's nice and thick. I'm not worrying about much. Just feels good. Feels really good. Going back over some previously applied areas, just making sure they're nice and thick. There we go. And now we're going to do this line here with a slightly darker pigment. So we already have something on our palette. We'll just grab some extra Mars black, maybe a little bit of extra blue so that it's not void of color. And then here we have a very dark base layer. Initially, this is going to look too dark but we are going to work some of these darker pigments into the rest of the water and make it feel cohesive in a little bit. So if you're not there. There we go. Now I'm going to clean my brush quite well and I'm going to do so relatively quickly because I want to do the next step while the pigment is still wet. If you don't make it, it is okay. You can still paint wet into dry but it will be quite convenient if it is still wet. So now I'm switching back to the smaller round pointed brush. Grab a little bit more of this paint. And I'm going to start working this down into some of the darker areas that we have through here. I'm not doing too much. My brush is quite watery, so it's not incredibly dark. When we move it, it still looks like it makes sense within the context of the rest of the painting. But we're eliminating that very hard edge that we had, and we're blending this new pigment into the old pigment, at least in terms of value. There we go. I'm also going to take a little bit of it and work that down into here as well. A couple other spots that I think could be quite dark. And then we do our soft little blends which are easy because the brush is nice and damp. With that, I'm going to let this dry, then I'm going to go back in, do a second layer, just to make sure it's thick enough, and then we'll continue adding some details together. So now what we're going to do is take our smaller round pointed brush, we'll grab some of our cerulean blue, titanium white, and a little bit of Mars Black as well to mix up a blue, which again isn't bright, but is brighter than the color we previously mixed. And this is something that we want to be quite similar to what we have down here, but maybe just a little bit darker. And I can tell that we found quite a good match there, and that means we just add a little bit of extra Mars Black. We might accidentally make it slightly too dark, so then we go back, add in a little bit of extra blue, a little bit of extra white so it's not too saturated, and that might be it. We'll give it another shot, and I think that's a good step in that direction. So now we're going to make sure our brush is pretty damp so that this is fairly transparent and we can see these darker applications behind, and now I'm going to start creating all of the little motions in the water in the background. These are, for the most part, going to be very choppy horizontal lines of different lengths. You are going to want them to be as thin as possible. The more pressure you apply with your brush, the more thick they'll get, so 
If you feel like you're just not getting the paint off with a very light application, grab some extra paint, grab some extra water rather than pressing the brush into the canvas. I have an example of doing that right here with these two and it just looks a little bit too wide. So in those scenarios, you can actually get some Mars black, some extra blue, hint of titanium white, mix up that dark pigment that we were using previously for that base layer. And then once we have that, we can just kind of reincorporate it. There we go. I'm going to make my brush fairly clean. When you mix all of that paint, generally you have a lot of paint on your brush and it can be difficult to kind of work on the actual canvas. So in those scenarios, you're going to want to just go back. Take that paint off and then come back into it. This is actually a little bit brighter than our initial base layer, and I like it a lot. So while we covered up that too large application, we can also use this to just kind of start moving some extra applications in there. You want this to be the most subtle possible. It is in the distance. It's far away. You're not going to see that level of detail. You can see that I'm also consistently remixing a lot just because I wasn't initially certain with my mix and I didn't want to mix too much of something that just wasn't right. So we do some practice, we do some remixing, gets us better at practicing, making those pigments, memorizing how to get them. So it's good for the future. And you can see that I'm also jumping around because I really want to create a lot of diversity in this. I don't want to kind of incorporate the same technique in the same area subconsciously. And by moving around the canvas a lot, you ensure that if you are unintentionally, accidentally, doing the same application style, that it is going to be spread out and so different areas can still look different rather than blocks of the same technique, right? Just a little safety measure. With that, we'll mix up a bit of a darker pigment again and work some of that back into our painting. There we go. So you can go in with the light pigments, you can go in with the dark pigments. You don't want it to be any darker than this though. Do you remember that? This is more just to fix things up if you feel any line work is just a little bit too thick. You can tell it's very subtle. So here we are at a bit of a distance and I do feel like the progression from this to this is actually really nice. I like the amount of detail, I like the difference in contrast, and I think we're ready to move on to the next step which is highlighting the top of this very long wave that we have right here. For that we will be using that same small round point brush. We'll be grabbing some of our cerulean blue, titanium white, and Mars black. This time, mixing up something a bit brighter than what we just used because this wave is closer, it's also higher, so it's able to collect a bit more light. And I'm going to work with a bit of a choppy stroke, not in a perfect horizontal line, but allowing for little bumps, missed areas. I'm just going to work my way across the top of this wave recognizing that some areas are going to be higher than others. Just like that. And then the water is going to move down a little bit, so I'm going to create the edge of the water that is falling. And this is done with a lot of tapping again. Not a perfect horizontal line, I'm moving up and down. My paint's really dissipating here. Again, it's very natural at this point. We could go in with a lot more contrast, a lot more detail, 
And we'll add a little bit more, but we don't want to do too much because it's not that close. And it just wouldn't be realistic to make it this very standoffy, this very standouty piece. We're making up a couple words in this tutorial, apparently. Really having fun with it. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, you find some comedy in that. Not taking things too seriously, but still enjoying the process of learning together. Now we're going to start moving up in the canvas, and we're going to do so with the one-inch flat-headed brush, because we are going to begin on the sky. Now, I'm going to begin with a fairly dark blue for the top of the sky, so I'll grab quite a bit of Mars Black, a good amount of our Cerulean Blue, a hint of Titanium White with the corner of my brush, not much at all. And the goal here is going to be to render, at least initially, a nice little vignette. Darker edges for the corners of the painting, that way the eye does tend to move towards the middle, as the eye will naturally and neatly move to the brightest subject. So by making this top area and those corners a little bit darker, we can move those eyes in, which is a nice little subconscious way of moving the viewer. With that, once I have some of that paint on there, I do try to move back and forth very softly with horizontal strokes. So once we start to move down with the pigment, we are going to grab some extra cerulean blue, work that in, a little bit of extra titanium white, work that in, and just progressively make this slightly brighter. We still want it to be quite dark because it is a night sky, but this middle area is where we are going to implement the moon, and therefore we do want it to be a bit more prominent. With that, here we are now blending into the previous application. It has started to dry a little bit, so you can see that I'm kind of working my brush back and forth with a bit of pressure. Generally, this is something you do want to avoid because you don't want it to become too streaky, but you can move your brush over it very softly after the fact to make it just quite a bit more smooth. With that, I will grab more of that pigment, work that off to the side here, do a nice blend inwards, as we have and will continue to do. More so over here. You can probably hear the brush pressing into the canvas. And then we have that soft movement back and forth. With that, we'll continue making this brighter. We'll add some extra blue, some extra white. Just like so. There we go, that's really nice. And you can see that I am going over portions of the bridge in my drawing. Again, we can just add that back in later, look at the traceable, look at the reference photo, or just go back to the start of the video. You can also make changes to it now that we've come a bit farther in the painting, start instigating some of those. We'll get a little bit brighter, more blue, more titanium white. And I'm actually going to cover up some fairly prominent areas of this bridge because we are going to have a lot of that sky showing through. And what I'm going to try to do is essentially just leave the beams that are separating portions here. That way I still know where they are, but the bridge itself we'll have those openings and it'll make painting a lot easier in the future steps. That said, you can tell just how thin some of these pigments are, so we are going to have to go over them a couple of times. Just build up those layers and make sure that in the end we have something nice and thick where you can't see the canvas showing through. With that, this next section is just going to be doing more of the same, doing a secondary layer, making this entire sky a bit more thick. So I think what I'm going to do is just finish this up, and then I will see you with the next step in a couple of minutes, because I do want to let this dry before I go in 
with the next layer. So, I will see you in just a second. So here we are a couple of steps back and as you can see I did go ahead and add a second layer to all of this make it significantly more thick so that that white canvas doesn't show through and while I was at it I also took a pigment that was just slightly brighter than this and I applied it in between the little legs that we have over on the right hand side and then on the left hand side again it got a little bit too busy so I decided to just cover all of that up and then our next step will be to uh, kind of go in and work on some details. With that, let's get you a bit closer and have some fun. So here we are quite close to the canvas. We are going to grab some of that cerulean blue, a little bit of our titanium white, hint of our Mars black, mix something slightly brighter than what we currently have right down here. And then we'll apply it to that horizon myriad of small strokes. We can use the edge to blend up a little bit using a circular stroke. And that is really nice. Just gives it this slight glow, a little bit of an ethereal look in the background. Doesn't stand out too too much but it's a it's a great little detail in the painting. There we are. So essentially, what we want to do here is make the bottom fairly sharp. And I'll go back and I'll correct this a couple of times, just trying to make sure that it is as horizontal and as linear as it can be. But I do want the top to be much softer. So here I am going back yet again, second time, lifting some of this paint in this rounded stroke and just letting it dissipate into the rest of the sky, like so. Really beautiful little detail. Now for the next step, I want to apply a couple very small stars into the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape, I'm going to take some paper, which I am currently getting ready here and I'm just going to tape this right here to the bottom of the horizon so that none of these stars which I'm about to apply get on any other area of the painting. So we've essentially just ensured that our water is nice and safe and from there we can take our smaller round pointed brush make sure that it's nice and damp we can take a little bit of our cerulean blue, some of our titanium white. We don't want to use pure titanium white because we still want those stars to have that nice cool blue look. Then I'll grab some extra water, work that in here to the point where it's essentially just like a watercolor, incredibly thin. It's almost dripping here on my palette. Now I will hold my brush back and I'll just fling some paint at the canvas. If you uh, have anything in the background right behind your canvas that you do not want to get little specks on, then I heavily recommend putting down a drop cloth or you know just anything to protect the floors or furniture behind. But as you can see, we have a really nice subtle effect. I don't want too many stars in this setting. That isn't really the goal here, but I do want a couple and this is a great way of going about it because all of your stars are going to end up being different sizes. Some of them will have a slightly different shapes. The markings you make this way are going to be smaller than you could have with a tapping effect in your brush. And it's also going to randomize things very efficiently. So if you ever find that when you're applying stars or anything you know, in a great number, and you kind of run into this repetition unintentionally, it's subconscious, but you don't want that repetition because you're trying to essentially recreate nature. This is 
you know, a great way of avoiding that and just ensuring that things are going very smoothly. With that, I'm almost at the amount of stars that I want. We are so, so close. And if you want significantly more stars, maybe you want to paint a, a full galaxy Milky Way in the background, you know, you can do that. Recognize that these lessons are here for you to learn, to have fun with, to guide you, but not to handcuff you. Feel free to take these and you know whichever direction you like, personalize them, make them your own. You don't have to follow them step for step. And if you want more stars, you are more than welcome to incorporate them. But I personally really like what we are very close to. There we go. Not too many, not too few. With that, I think we will let those stars dry, get a little bit closer, and work on that moon together. Now that our stars are fully dry, we're going to head in with a slightly larger round pointed brush. This one is actually about a quarter of an inch, where the last one was about an eighth of an inch. The size doesn't really matter that much, but it'll just make the job slightly easier. And why we want this one is because it does have those rounded edges, and we're about to paint in a nice glow for the moon. So, here I have some titanium white. We'll just move that down here in our palette. We'll grab a little bit of our cerulean blue. Not too much. Work that in there. We'll grab the smallest hint of Mars Black. This is a glow, but we don't want it to be too saturated, so we are going to incorporate just a little bit of that. And we also don't want this pigment to be brighter than the actual moon, so we can't have it too, too, too bright from the inception. With that, I think we have a fairly nice color and value right there. I'm going to find the exact middle of the canvas, at least in the top area here. And I say, you know what, this looks like the perfect spot to paint the moon. So I'm going to go in exactly where that moon will be. I'm going to go into the center area. I'm going to start getting a little bit of this paint off my brush. And then I'm going to take the rest of the pigment off of the brush, make it nice and damp, as we do when we want to make some fairly transparent applications. And I'm going to go in with the brush on a bit of an angle, you can see that I have it at the side. And from there, I'm going to work in circular strokes. I'm just going to move that highlight outwards until we essentially just run out of paint and water. We're being very soft with our brush. We're trying to avoid any real brush strokes. We'll get a little bit of a patterned effect, which I think looks quite nice, especially from a distance. It's also wet right now, so it's a lot more prominent than it will be when we conclude. You can also soften it with your finger, but again, if you're going to do this, make sure that your fingers are extremely clean because you don't want the oils from your fingers or anything else to kind of hinder this area of the painting. And just like that, we have this nice, very subtle glow coming from that spot. Now let's grab a bit more paint. Let's add that right into the middle again, where our moon will be. And you can almost practice just painting your moon in this part of the process, figuring out how big or small you want it to be. Practicing getting that nice circle in there. And then you know what we do. Take all of that paint off our brush, make it nice and damp. Go in with that rounded effect. And we just make that glow. Trying to get a very even gradient. From opaque or semi-opaque to fully transparent. Let's continue this process from a little bit of a distance because you do want to do this while looking at the rest of the painting. We don't want to get too hyper-focused on this area specifically because while we want this to look great, it still needs to fit in with everything else. So let's get a little bit farther back and continue from there. So here we are from a bit of a distance this time and this is where you can really start to decide how big 
you want that moon to be. When you're up close, it can be quite difficult. I think a lot of us inherently kind of either want to make it look very small or very big, but there's something to be said about that middle ground that doesn't kind of steal the attention away from everything else in the piece, but also creates a really nice subject that can kind of stand by itself. With that, here I am starting to work a little bit wider with my glows, at least with the more you know, initial fully opaque applications. And then I'll do a little bit of a blend out, see how I like it. If we don't like it that much, you know, we can just continue to blend out, make this glow go even farther and therefore make it less prominent. But I think I'm actually really liking a size That'll be close to this. Not too big, not too small, very much in the middle. Here we can accentuate that glow. The more you do this, the better you'll get at it. I think things are starting to get more consistent. Initially you might see a little bit of a uh, texture little open areas and enclosed areas, but there it definitely comes together, feels a bit more solid. Now we'll go back in, repaint that moon, and maybe turn it into a glow, maybe not. It might be a little bit quiet through this part of the process just because it's Something you want to focus on. You know what, I think, I think I'm actually very happy with that. Yeah, that looks nice. It has a relatively sharp top and left hand side, but then as you come into the bottom and then move up to the bottom right, it's a bit softer and it kind of has this glow that moves off. It definitely gives it an extra a texture, an extra look that does, you know, when you look at it, you don't say, oh, I know exactly what that is. You have to think about it a little bit more. And those are great little techniques to incorporate through the painting to ensure that the viewer doesn't look at it immediately say, oh, okay, I kind of get what's going on here. I'm going to move on. It's little things like that that kind of capture the attention and keep it for a longer period of time. So I very much like how that turned out right there. If anything, I'm now just going to switch to the smaller round a pointed brush, make that nice and damp. I'll mix up something that's just a hint brighter than what we had, and I'll come in with this. And I wanted to switch to this brush to do the final application because it is a little bit more detail oriented being that it's smaller. It does still have those nice rounded edges for blends and then that nice sharp tip for when I want to make things really stand out. It's worth noting though that the true highlight is only really going in the middle and then I blend it out towards the edges which do get a little bit darker because our previous mixture was a little bit darker. But with that, I am very happy there. So our next step is actually going to be redrawing in all of the lights that we have for this right here. And to do that, I'm going to be using a medium called Conte. Here, you can see what that looks like. And it's essentially just chalk. A lot of these have nice sharp edges. So this is fantastic because it allows us to allocate different colors to different subjects. It comes off with the addition of water and it doesn't dilute any pigment in the same way a charcoal or graphite might. So I'm a big fan of it for drawing and especially you know later in the process where we don't want to be putting charcoal or graphite over actual paint. With that, I'm going to sketch that on. I'll implore you to. And again, if you uh, kind of forgot what it looks like, you can of course go back to the start of the video. You can use the traceable, the reference photo. Both of those are up over on Patreon. And with that, we will jump back into the painting portion in just a second. So as you can see, I went in and drawn all of those pre-existing lines with a little bit of gray Conte. Now we're going to be using the one inch flat headed brush and we're going to paint this in. So for this, I'm going to be using quite a bit of Mars black and a little bit of our cerulean blue 
as well as just a hint of titanium white. We essentially want this to be one of the darkest pigments we've mixed thus far, so predominantly it is going to be Mars black, but we do still want it to have that nice cold moonlit vibe, so we are also incorporating some of that blue as well. And as you can see, I am mixing up a fairly sizable amount here, and that's because we have a large surface area to cover. So I'm going to begin by taking my pinky finger, placing it on the canvas to create a very sturdy place to apply. That way we take the shake out of our hand. Then I'm just going to start moving across this initial line. I did make it with a ruler initially to help me ensure that it's nice and straight and we're going to continue to try to keep it that way. We want this application to get smaller as you move farther into the distance because this railing is getting smaller, right? Visually anyway. Technically it's the same size, but the farther away something is, the smaller it's going to look. So this is actually a great piece for a lesson on perspective. Here I'm going back up to the front, expanding upon that line a little bit, making it bigger on the top, a little bit bigger on the bottom. Still working really hard to keep it nice and straight. We're able to apply all of this paint because our brush is fairly damp, it's keeping things wet. It's allowing me to do a lot of these very fine, sharp applications, just like that. Started off really small and then I expand, and that's generally how I recommend doing these sorts of things, because it's a lot easier to make things larger, but it's quite difficult to make them smaller. There we go. Let's get a little bit closer and continue working on those details. Now, as you can probably see, now that we're a little bit closer, portions of this are a little bit uneven. I'm going to go back and fix that up, but I'm going to do so later with the smaller round pointed brush. Right now, however, we have a lot of wet pigment on our palette and I don't want it to all dry while we spend time fixing that up. So instead, I'm going to continue to progress here with this larger brush and make use of all of that paint that we've added to our palette. So I'm starting by just blocking in all of these good supports like that. Lots of little vertical strokes. And they're getting closer and closer together as you move into the distance, not because they are actually getting closer together, but because perspective is making them look more condensed. It's like looking at a forest. When you're up close to the trees, they look very far apart, but as they get distant, they look all clumped together. The same goes for structures like this. There we go. already starting to look quite nice. That said, when we expanded these, it made it quite evident that we do also need to go back and expand the top a little bit, but that's good. I'd much rather feel like the top is too thin rather than too thick. So let's go back and do just that. Again, we'll fix up the edging a little bit later with the smaller, more refined brush. But for now, we'll get all of that paint on the canvas that we need. You can make longer continuous motions like that. Just be careful when you do so. You don't want your hand to start to dip or to raise in the process. 
Admittedly, it's slightly difficult to talk during this process just because you have to have so much focus with it. But it kind of makes it even more so rewarding just because it is a, a bit of a challenge on the technical side of things. Now here we will start to fill in the larger body of canvas here, which is still yet to be painted. And that's starting to look quite good. Grab more of our paint. And it's worth noting that the paint here is starting to dry. I get a lot of questions as to how I keep my palette wet. And there are different techniques you can use. You can use different mediums. You can get a little spray bottle and actually spray your palette. But I find these techniques can kind of make the paint a little bit inconsistent. And so I much rather have the paint naturally as it is and just occasionally let it dry and grab new paint. It is something that I know when you're just beginning can, you don't want it to happen, right? You just want to, you've invested in all of these new tubes of paint, you want to get as much creation out of them as you possibly can. But realistically, if you don't have a lot of paint on your palette, you're not going to make the mixes that you end up really wanting or needing. You're not going to experiment in big ways and you're probably going to settle for the first mixture you make. So having the excess of paint on the palette that does inevitably dry can be really, really beneficial. And that's just something we uh, kind of learn to accept as we paint for longer periods of time. Here I do already actually need to mix up a bit more paint. So we'll do that right on top of our previous mixture. Again, still just using a hint of titanium white, but not much at all. I want this to be as similar as possible to our previous mixture. I'm also trying to get some nice thick applications here. We had a lot of detail and extra line work in here, but we can work that back in after. I just want to ensure that we do get a very nice, consistent application. There we go. It's also worth noting that again, if you do have a troubles with getting that drawing exactly right, you can find the reference photo, which is actually during the day, but I will Photoshop up a, a night one. And the traceable, you can find both of those up over on Patreon. You can use a projector, you can use transfer paper, you can use the grid lines, a lot of different tools up there, or a lot of different tools rather you can associate and work with a traceable with and just kind of get this and the respective as right as possible if you're interested. And there's a link to that in the video description. I would also like to say a massive thank you to everybody right now who is up over on Patreon. As we always, as we always say, you guys, you keep the lights on, you make it so that I can spend my time these days working on all of these different lessons, really ensuring that, you know, we record them in real time, that we you know, sometimes end up doing two or three different versions before I end up putting anything out on YouTube just because I want the process to be as good as it can possibly be, that we're doing everything in the right sequence, that, you know, we're doing different techniques, continuously just learning and getting better together, right? And I only have that time, I only have that opportunity because of you, because of your support, because you support the channel up over on Patreon, so Thank you for literally making these longer lessons happen and uh, you know providing me with the opportunity to teach art for a living and providing everybody else at home the opportunity to watch these for free up over on YouTube, right? So, you know, big thank you from me, big thank you I'm sure from everybody else watching this. What you do up there, it uh, makes a big impact. But with that, I'd also like to note for anybody who may be you know, in here for the first time, this is your first lesson on the channel, 
Up over on Patreon, we do have all of the traceables and reference photos for these paintings. But what we also have is a bunch of eBooks, one of which is Acrylics for Beginners. In it, we talk about everything you need to know before you jump into your first acrylic painting. We talk about glazing, composition, what brushes to use, how to mix with water. Really, again, just everything under that painting sun. There are also a bunch of eBooks full of trace voice for those uninspired days. We have an exclusive Facebook group where you can share your artwork, chat, and just see how everybody's taking these in their own direction. I think it's a lot of fun and it's a really positive community. And there's, a, there's a lot of really fun things up over on Patreon if you do want to check that out. And again, it's, a, it's just a great way to support the channel as well. With that, I am I'm very much focusing right now, currently incorporating all of these little pieces that are separating that you can still see that sky through. Using this brush because in just a couple of taps, I can stretch from one end of the sky to the other. I think that's looking quite good. And then in the back here, we can actually do multiple at a time. But because it's getting smaller, you're not actually going to see all of these different divisions. Here you can see one, two, three, four, but in the background you start to see three and then two, just because there isn't enough visual space to have all of those show up. And you wouldn't see all of them in real life either. So we're not making a compromise because of the size of canvas. We are simply adjusting to what it naturally would look like, right? We can also grab more of this pigment, start creating the downward lines. I'm just going to look in the reference photo for a second. Pick that up so you can see actually. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five different pieces that go down in between these larger ones. So that's an odd number. That means I know one needs to go in the middle. And we'll make these a little bit larger than what we have in here, but smaller than what we have here. So one, two, two, three, four, five. We could do a little bit of a touch up on them, but I think that is really quite nice. We'll go back to the middle. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now something I'm noticing very quickly is that I'm having a lot of fun and I'm uh, getting to the point where I want to do it really quickly. Take your time, <laughs> relax, it's very enjoyable, but you still want to ensure that you're being careful with it and you're making this look the way you want it to. We're also making these smaller and smaller as we get farther back. Potentially even more semi-transparent because much like the horizontal strokes, these are also going to visually dissipate as you move into that distance. There we go. Still looking very nice. Okay, so for our next step, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the smaller round-headed brush and we'll do some touch-ups in and around these areas. So now that we're up close, we are going to switch to the smaller round pointed brush and I am going to continue working with more of that mixture that we've been painting with. This will give us an opportunity to do a couple of things. One is, you know, going in and just correcting some of these lines that might not have been perfect initially. Maybe changing the angle a little bit, but it'll also give us an opportunity here to go up and extend these. This is something I wanted to do earlier, but with the larger brush, it was just a little bit more risky. And the fine chart tip on this one going to make it much more 
easily accomplishable. So, just going to bounce from post to post here. Give it a little bit more height and this will start looking a bit more interesting. Right now, I think it looks a little bit flat, a little bit wonky, but that is just how these things begin and we will get it to look significantly better as we continue to work on it. With that, I can definitely tell this area right here could use a little bit more work. I think I want to make these slightly more thick, like that. If you accidentally make it too thick, you can also just remix a little bit of blue and go back there. But this is really a process I'd implore you to spend real time on. The more correct you get it, the more natural the piece will look. And honestly, this is a process that I could spend hours just critiquing, making the smallest little tweaks, and having fun with it. Because it really is fun at this point. It's just finding the little things and making them as good as they can possibly be. Right? There we go. I'm expanding this one a little bit. I think that this one has a little bit of a lean, so maybe I'll expand that side so it's a bit more straight. Now we'll make our brush nice and damp. We'll create some of that beautiful sky color. And again, because this is something that could be done for hours, and I'll probably spend quite some time on it, I'm not going to walk you through the entirety of this fix up job just because all of ours are going to be very different. I just wanted to show you how I was going about it and the different steps I would take. So I'm using the smaller brush. I'm going back and forth between the dark and the light. There you can see we moved the blue down slightly too much. So again, there's one more thing to just kind of jump back to and it's just going to be a process of trial and error, getting things as smooth and clean as we can. With that, I think I can also tell that that's a little bit thin. So I'm going to put down that smaller round pointed brush, get this one, get the big one. Some blue, hint of white. There we go. And we can just cover that up again. Now we're going to move down in the piece, and as you can see, we have these longer little undersides to the bridge here. And in the reference photo, you'll see that they actually have this warm light. And obviously a lot of that's coming from the sun right here, it's at the bottom, it's reflecting upwards, downwards, but with this, we've moved our moon up. So, why would we still incorporate that? We'd still incorporate that a little bit because all of the light from the moon is hitting the water, as we can see, and it has a reflection that works its way back up here. So it'll be more subtle in our version than it is in the reference photo, but it's still a great extra little technique to add to give it some extra realism. So here, we'll take some of our blue, we'll take a little bit of our Mars black, hint of our titanium white, and we're looking to make something that's just a little bit brighter than what we were currently working with. I think that's a good mix right there. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom here and I'm going to give it a try. There we go. Move on to the next one. Next one. Next one. And upon my first look here, I think that they could be a little bit brighter. However, I don't want to apply that right now because that was actually some pretty thick paint and I don't want to overdo it. So what we're going to do is we're going to let all of that dry and then we'll come back in and do a second application. So as an update, and as you can probably tell, I did end up changing how this worked dimensionally. I just wanted to ensure that this 
was smaller than what we had right over here and that there's a consistent progression to make it larger because that is just how perspective works. I think I kind of got a little ahead of myself in the painting process and maybe expanded that a little bit more than I should have outside of the initial lines. I was just, I was looking at the reference photo, I was looking at that and I was saying something's not quite right and then I kind of remeasured and realized, oh, no, it's um, it's not right. <laughs> so I uh, I just kind of expanded the sky and I made that a little bit wider. Uh, again, that's entirely just you know, uh, do your measurements beforehand and make sure they're right before you apply the paint. With that, I am going to jump back into the technique we were just talking about, where we grab some of our cerulean blue, Mars black, a little bit of titanium white. A little bit more Mars black. I think that'll be quite nice once we get it consistent. Right now I can see little splotches of blue and black, but there we go. Now, come down to the bottom of this, and oh, that'll look really nice, yeah. Okay, very happy with that. Again, it's just a little detail, won't do too much, but it helps in a non-distracting way. And of course, we need to be more thick, the closer we get to us. There we go. Looking really nice there. So, now, our next step is going to be starting on all of these right down here. And for that, I am going to use quite a bit of Mars Black, a little bit of that Cerulean Blue. Again, we're looking for a similar mixture to what we used in all of those silhouetted applications right up there. There we go. And for the most part, these beams here are on an angle, but we have the occasional perfectly vertical one. I don't want to forget about this, so I'm going to start with it. It's kind of the odd pull out. I'm also going to leave this bottom area just for now, because this brush, while it does have some sharp edges, will have a slight trouble with that and it'll be really easily achieved by switching to the smaller round pointed brush, which we can do in a minute once we've used the majority of this darker pigment we've just mixed. So very much a process of jumping back and forth to achieve the best results in the most efficient way. There we go. Again, I think this looks quite nice, but could be cleaned up with the smaller brush, and we will do that in just a minute. Now, let's go over here, see another one. Might have to repaint some of our sky. That's okay, though. And in a lot of these scenarios, we're just going to be painting this nice crisscross effect. You don't have to cover all of the Conte, by the way. If you feel like your stroke will be too large, if you do, don't worry about it, because you can always just wait for the pigment to dry and then take the Conte off with a little bit of water, a damp brush, a lot of different ways of going about it. That's why it's such a great drawing material. And now we'll get some of the ones that kind of crosshatch here. You can see that they're quite thin initially, but we will build those up. There we go. Let's get you a little bit closer. 
So here we are a little bit closer. I am going to grab more of our pigments to continue mixing here. Don't want to, again, kind of run out and feel like we have to press the brush into the canvas with any additional pressure because that again is how we end up with those really large lines that just don't fit in the rest of the painting. With that, here you can see that I'm going over these applications a couple of times starting to cover more and more of that contact, starting to make this boardwalk here look a bit more sturdy, really, and sharpening some of those edges that may not have been perfect initially, right? So there's a lot that's going on in this very simple movement. There we go. Slowly expanding, just making it something great. We have lots in the background here, but I might, I might make it a little bit brighter. A little bit of titanium white, a little bit of that cerulean blue. If the back of this is slightly less dark than the front, it'll look farther away and it'll just add to that depth that we've been working very hard to achieve in a number of ways here. I think it's working quite well. There we are. See that? Starting to pay off. They actually do look more distant, don't they? We don't want to take this too far into the mid-ground, but I am starting to run out of paint on my brush. So it's going to get lesser and lesser as you move forward, which is actually perfect. There we go. Really, really nice. Now, again, we will get you closer. We'll switch to the smaller round pointed brush and we'll just fix up some of those details. So we're going to begin here by taking our small round pointed brush. We'll grab some Mars black paint, mix that up with our darker pigment. And now we'll just go in and we'll touch up all of these little bottom areas that were initially a little bit difficult just because of the scale of our brush. It's fantastic that the one inch flathead brushes as big as it is because it means, you know, generally we can cover these massive areas with ease and, you know, not have to worry about certain areas drying. But when you want to fill in these details, get everything just as clean as it can possibly be, it's not the most ideal situation. So that's when we come in with this and we just make sure things are really stunning. With that, I definitely have a couple areas that need to be filled in with some blue, so I'll also take care of that now. We'll grab a little bit of that cerulean blue, titanium white, and of course this is something that's going to be different for everybody. You know, maybe, maybe you don't have any of that you know, white canvas showing through, or maybe your sky is as good as it can possibly be already, but if it isn't, don't worry about it. We can go back in and we can fix things up. We can also make some of these smaller should we need to. Now the issue here, it's a small one, if we do this over a lot of area, it'll be evident that we don't have stars there anymore. So just try to be mindful of that. And if you feel like you've taken all the stars out of an area, you can cover these areas with um, a tape and then kind of add additional stars or you can add the stars and then go back and just kind of paint over the stars in the silhouette. That's probably a little bit easier. But with that, I really like how this is turning out. And we'll just do one more little touch up right here. Make that nice and sharp. 
Now what we're going to do is you're going to take a little bit of a break from that area just to ensure that we can remove ourselves and you know return to it very objectively. So right now I'm going to head back down to this area and I just want to add a little bit of wet sand in here as well, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Mars Black, a little bit of Titanium White, and quite a bit of that Cerulean Blue. We'll mix up a nice cool shadowy color here, make our brush quite damp, and this is where we will apply our first glaze of the painting. So, I'm going to use the soft edge of my brush. This is quite watery, as you can see by the edge here. I'm going to work this back into where the water meets the sand, and then I'm going to blend outwards in a bit of a circular motion. And as you can tell, we're not really changing the value as we spread this out. We're just changing the hue a little bit so it looks a bit colder. And it's a great way of just adding a little bit of extra detail or changing the color in a painting. Here I'm going in with some extra water, just changing that effect a little bit. I'll add it over here as well. Just making that sand look wet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the smaller round pointed brush. Grab some of our blue, titanium white, hint of Mars black. Mix up a blue quite similar to what we were using for the highlights in the water beforehand. And I'll test it there, looks good. Just work a tiny bit in and around this spot. Predominantly working the edges, and more so, as you can see, right above the darker areas that we just applied. That way it looks like the darker is a bit of a shadow, and this is the water, the edge that's just catching some extra light and reflecting. There we go. Let's grab a bit more. Nice and easy. Okay, so now that you've seen the details, we're actually going to back up and paint from a bit of a distance because I want to ensure that, again, it's all very cohesive. We have canvas. Um, well, we have <laughs> paint covering the entirety of the canvas now, and I want to ensure that from here on out, things are really meshing well. And generally the best way of doing that is painting from a bit of a distance. So here, I'm going to continue adding to this with a bit of a brighter pigment. I'm applying this highlight in a very similar way to how I did up here. It's lots of little taps. It's, you know, finding edges and moving along them, but at the same time, letting there be openings. We'll move this back into here and let it dissipate under the shadow as well. I'm going to make my brush nice and damp so we can continue over on this side. And these are just going to be some really nice extra details to bring this to fruition. Now we'll have different levels of water, some of which more deep and voluminous than others. Also trying to add some extra highlight here in the middle because again we have that moon and the light it generates. I'll also do a little bit of a blend to the right hand side 
Let there be a gradient that again dissipates, becomes very transparent, just like that. We'll head over here. We can do something similar as long as we don't make it too visually samey. Now a little bit of water up here as well. Perhaps there's a slight dip in the land and just a tiny bit has been able to pool or stay right there, right? Now we'll make something slightly brighter. Blue, titanium white, Mars black. Build those highlights up. Blend them back when necessary. Starting to look like it fits, right? I think so. There we are. Again, I know I'm getting a little bit quiet, but I think, I think it's about 10 p.m. right now. <laughs> Been painting for a while, it's getting a little bit late. I'm also really focusing. This is a point where we can get quite creative with it, but we don't want to take away from all of the really beautiful applications we've already made. Right now, we're trying to build on what we've done and accentuate areas, not create new centerpieces. So far, I think so good. This area back here could definitely look less sand-like, so I'm just going to try adding in this highlight. It's pretty reflective. I think that worked well. Create another little pool right here. But this one, unlike this or this, as you can see, didn't have that darker base. So it looks much more white. That is why, for the most part, we do a lot of layering. Now here, we're going to have something a little bit different. I'm actually going to put our other colors on after that first bright application. Kind of show you how that goes. Because there's always more one, more than one way to kind of do a painting. Lots of opportunities, try different things, different techniques, and it's really about your preference, right? Here we go. We can also take some of this and add it back under these. Give it a little bit more depth. There we go. And here I'm just doing a softer blend. So now that we have all of this water rolling in here, we are going to move on to the next step, which is going to be done with the smaller round pointed brush, a little bit of titanium white, and a little bit of cerulean blue as well. We're going to make this nice and thin in the same way we did earlier with the stars. I'm gonna put my palette down and we're going to fling a little bit of this pigment right here in the foreground. And I'm trying to get incredibly close to the canvas. That way it looks like water splashing right in front here with these waves. You can actually make this fairly directional and that's why you can see that I'm rotating my brush and applying that in very different ways. It's a great way of just adding a little bit of extra detail, sharpness to the foreground. You can see that I'm kind of having it fling off that way there, off that way there, and then it's more straight right in the middle. But it's looking really, really nice. And then a little bit of it is going over the sand 
just bringing it all together and showing that the water is rushing its way over here. We can also now take some titanium white, some of our cerulean blue, mix that up, and just tap on some additional highlights. These ones are going to be bigger than everything we've made before, but they're going to be purposeful and just help us ensure that the areas that we want to be really prominent and stand out to. It's the combination of techniques that's really going to bring the front of this painting to a beautiful place. There we go. Definitely a step in the right direction. Now we do need to head right back up here because I forgot a really neat little structure. So now what we're going to do is we'll grab some of that Mars black, a little bit of our cerulean blue, hint of our titanium white because it is quite far away. We don't want this to be the darkest of our silhouette colors. Then I'll take that extra paint off my brush because again, right after you mix, generally you have a lot of excess and that can make your applications a little bit messy. With that, I'm now going to start on the edges. And I like to begin on the edges of my subjects and structures first and then fill them in because generally when you first grab paint and water, you have the ability to make the sharpest strokes. And the longer you apply paint, the harder that becomes. So I essentially do all of those outer lines while I can with real efficiency. And then I move into the middle. And we just start working on that next step. That said, I think that's a really nice shape. It's a really nice size. It's a little bit thin. We'll definitely need another layer, but so far so good. We do need to give it some legs. There's one. There's another. There we go. And we can even add something nice up at the top here. Maybe it has a flag. There we go. Nice little details, right? With that, we can grab some extra Mars black, blue, titanium white. I'm not going to use as much water this time, so it'll be a bit thicker. And I'll just fill this in. I think we'll leave the flag itself to be a bit more semi-transparent. Just have that beautiful blue light reflecting on it. You can also add the other legs over here. I'm also going back and making it slightly brighter because when I stepped back, I felt like the value of it was darker than what we have down here, and that's not what we want. This is also in the distance, and its value should be a little bit softer. There we go. So here we are from a bit of a distance, and as you can see, things are starting to come together. I really like how we're balancing the light in it. I think that the structure itself is really cleanly applied, and I do think that the water for the most part is really coming to fruition. With that, there are a couple more details I would like to add up in the boardwalk. So let's get a little bit closer and incorporate some things that are going to give it a little bit more life, but aren't going to be distracting. So our next addition here is going to be done with the one inch flat headed brush. And we're going to start applying some highlights to the left hand side of all of these protruding legs that work their way out towards us. This is of course happening because of reflective light in the scene and I did check the reference photo and I noticed that it was a nice subtle detail on there as well. So we are on the right track. 
With that, again, one inch flat headed brush. We're going to make that nice and damp. Then we'll go ahead, grab some cerulean blue, a little bit of Mars black. This does need to be a bit of a darker mixture. It'll be brighter compared to the actual silhouette, but in general, it'll definitely be in the darker side of things. So we're just mixing this up. It is the next day, so I don't really have too much of a point of reference as to which blue here I'm uh, attempting to match, but I think kind of matching it from the start will be a good little lesson, right? So I apply that in and I say, you know what, I like that, but it might be a little bit too bright for our first application. It's something we could build up to. So I say, you know what, we'll add some extra Mars black and that might just do it right there. Let's take this, apply it to that left hand side, being very careful, trying to get that sharp application. We'll go over here as well because it's a large area, so we'll have a nice sample size. Work that in. Work that back up. Over here as well. And we'll work backwards as the paint dissipates. So, if we start to not really make much of an application, it looks good. It just looks like that detail is fading off into the distance like it should. Right there, I like it. I think that's a great first application. Now we'll build it up a little bit. Hint of blue, hint of titanium white, mix that about. Just like so. We'll apply that more so to the top to begin with. Then we'll just let it dissipate and blend in with our previous mixture as you move down. What you do want to avoid is getting the blue with the same value and hue as what you have for the sky. That way you don't kind of lose the legs in the sky. There we go. I think that looks quite nice. I think that actually looks really nice. That worked great. And then we can apply a little bit here just like that. It's definitely giving the painting some extra dimension. I feel like it kind of needed. Now next, I'm going to take that one inch flathead brush. We're going to retire that for a minute and we're going to take the smaller round pointed brush. We're going to be using the same pigment we just worked with and you can see those horizontal lines that we created to show the underside of those beams that are getting that reflective light. And something I also tried last night before going to bed was just incorporating this slight little piece that sticks up. This is essentially part of that beam. You can paint them as little squares, but I'm not filling the entirety of all of them in. And this kind of protrudes out from the boardwalk. So it's in a position where it can catch additional light. And as we go into the distance, again, we just let that pigment fade off on our brush. But you essentially want it to act as an L shape, as you can see, like that. Here I'm going back in, just adding a little bit of extra detail. And I think that is quite nice. We can also use this on the tops of our railings, should we want to. I'll just give you a little example of what that can look like. And if you don't like it, it's very easy to cover up because we are just working on a silhouette. Just makes it look like the light's coming through a little bit more add some extra dimension. We can also throw it here on the left hand side of our posts. So following the same rules as the legs themselves. Subtle but really nice. And now 
This isn't something I really see in the reference photo, but we can add it. So here we are just adding those final finishing touches to those shadows, and now when we take a step back, I think it becomes very evident that we have finished our acrylic painting. And I am so, so happy with how this turned out, especially considering that with this one, we did decide to get, you know, pretty brave with it. We did decide to incorporate this full, large structure, work with perspective, and create something that is perhaps, you know, a little bit out of our comfort zone. We can also do a little test here. We have the reference photo, we have that. We obviously made some changes added some extra life to the water here, of course, because it is the night, you do have that tide coming in, and I think that this turned out really, really beautifully. I do intend to do a sunset version like this, maybe a little bit warmer in the future, but I want to do that on a larger canvas, and again, for everybody who is uh, kind of new to the channel, maybe this is your first video, you can get the trace boards and the reference photos up over on Patreon, probably be pretty useful for the structure right here that is in the video description. But I'd also like to say a big thank you to everybody up over on Patreon for making this and every other lesson happen. Without you, I wouldn't be able to take the time to do these lessons, and I wouldn't be able to take the time to do them three or four times, which is sometimes what I do choose to do, just to ensure that I do get the layering process correct for you, so that we do explore a couple of different ideas before I bring it to you, and that way I know that I'm bringing to you the best lesson we possibly can. So, thank you for supporting the channel, for making that all possible. Um, it is a, it's a real honor and a real pleasure to you know, teach art online for a living here with you and you provide me with that opportunity. So thank you. And also thank you for providing these lessons to everybody else who can't afford to support the channel up over on Patreon. I know that I personally really appreciate it. I'm very certain that they also very much appreciate it. So thank you for doing what you do. And to everybody who is new to the channel, and again, this is your first lesson, you can get the traceables, the reference photos up over on Patreon. You can also get instant access to all of my ebooks, including Acrylics for Beginners. In there, we essentially talk about the essentials, everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into your first acrylic painting. In that, we talk about composition, how to blend your colors, what brushes to use, how to work with water, how to, you know, do different things like glazing, lots of those fun additional techniques. So go and check that out if you're interested. There are also a bunch of ebooks full of traceables for those uninspired days. We have some on landscapes. I do have one on flowers if you know that's something you're interested in it is the summertime I know that uh, a lot of us really love to paint flowers in the summer but with that we uh, we also have the exclusive Facebook group which you can get access to where we all do share our artwork our renditions and it's a it's a really positive community it's something I'm incredibly proud of we've built it up over the last number of years and it's so nice to see artists supporting artists and trying very similar pieces together, you know, kind of grabbing ideas from each other. But on that note, <laughs> and I know this might sound like a little bit of a, a tangent at this point, the longest run on sentence at the end, but sometimes ending these, it's a little bit difficult. I have a hundred things I want to say, and I would like to um, kind of end this on the note of don't feel like you have to do exactly what I did. Feel like you can take artistic liberties, make changes, add in your own style, have fun with it. These lessons are here to help you, they are here to teach you, they are not here to handcuff you. And if you want to try something, by all means, go for it, have fun, make it your own, and really enjoy the process. Just enjoy the process of painting, right? So anyways, there we have it. That is our painting. I do have a really nice seascape lined up for next week. And again, I do intend to do a sunset version of this at some point. So make sure that you are subscribed to make sure that you do hit that bell button. That's something I do not talk about really ever on this channel, but it's great to ensure that you do actually get to see these lessons and know when a new one is being uploaded. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, stay creative, stay healthy. I appreciate you immensely just for being here, for keeping a traditional art alive. And again, enjoy, stay creative.